Many of the minimalist missions that I and others have completed in Kerbal Space Program utilize propeller-based descent stages. These stages allow for the craft to rise above the denser layers of the atmosphere without using heavier jet or rocket engines. Without a question, propellers are an extremely useful component of minimalism. Around a year ago, Ultimate Steve and I discovered that orienting the propeller blades in an unusual manner results in substantially better performance, although we didn't fully understand why at the time. After much testing, I have finally uncovered the hidden mechanics behind KSP's aero model that allows for such results. Buckle up, get your pen and paper ready, and pay attention. It's time for a breakdown of directionally unpaired momentum perpetuators. Without fully breaking down the physics engine, Kerbal Space Program applies lift to wings as a normal force from the angle of the wing. Within the bounds of standard flight, this system works very well. But as is the case with many mechanics in gaming, one tiny oversight opens up a portal to exploits that break fundamental laws of physics. Because Kerbal Space Program is a simulation, a force cannot be applied instantaneously. In the real world, forces are experienced as they happen, and we can model them after the fact through physics. In a simulation, however, we start with the physics, which then results in forces. Consider a craft at rest. The craft is not experiencing any aerodynamic forces because it is not moving. Now imagine, within a single physics tick, the craft moves forward one meter. What should happen here? After the tick has happened, the game can calculate how much lift should be applied to the craft given the velocity, but it cannot retroactively apply the lift to the tick that had already passed. It also cannot apply the lift to the tick it is currently in, since the position was already updated before the lift was calculated. On the third game tick of this situation, the lift that was calculated on tick 2 is applied, and the process repeats. Since crafts are typically traveling in a linear path, this offsetting is negligible and doesn't cause any unexpected behavior. However, rotors in Kerbal Space Program can achieve 7.67 rotations per second, which means that the propeller blades move significantly in a non-linear way over a single game tick. Because one game tick is 1 50th of a second, and the rotor rotates 2,760 degrees per second, the fins rotate around the center 55.2 degrees per physics tick at maximum RPM. Now, given this information, how does the way in which the game processes physics apply to propeller assemblies? On tick 1, the blades are at 0 degrees. Now on tick 2, the blades rotate to 55.2 degrees. Note that I am assuming that the props are rotating at their maximum RPM of 460. At this point, the game takes this movement and calculates the lift that should be applied. It is not currently known how Unity handles propeller motion with relation to calculating lift, but what we do know is that a lift vector is calculated on the second tick of motion. Importantly, the angle of the fin on the second tick is the one that is used to determine the lift vector. As I mentioned, Lift is always normal to the lifting surface, which means that the direction of the lift vector can always be known based simply on the orientation of the propeller blade. Now, if you'll remember, the aerodynamic forces are applied to the tick following their calculation. This is where the game-breaking oversight takes place. When we progress to the third tick, the direction of the lift vector is preserved from the second tick, and now is disjointed from the normal of the basic fin, or as I termed it, directionally unpaired. The effective result of this is that the lift force is applied to the basic fins of the propellers one game tick after the force would have occurred. This behavior can result in some very bizarre side effects when abused. With standard prop orientation, the lift vector will be misaligned from the expected by 55.2 degrees in the opposite direction of the prop's rotation. This effect results in a noticeably lesser drag force than would be experienced in linear flight. However, we aren't limited to standard prop orientation. If we additionally rotate the fins in the roll direction, the expected lift vector will be angled towards the center of the craft. After transposing to the actual position that the vector is applied, the lift force is actually applied in the direction of the prop rotation. We can also rotate the fins in the yaw direction, pointing the lift vector exactly in the direction of the rotation. This results in a feedback effect, whereby the motion of the props on their own is enough to perpetuate their motion, serving as an overunity device in violation of the laws of physics. There are multiple implications of dump for minimalist missions. 
The most direct implication is it requires less input to get the same amount of output. The mass of breaking ground rotors can be reduced by decreasing the maximum torque value in the VAB at a rate of 2 kg per kilonewton, so any contribution to the torque from forces outside of the rotor leads to a decrease in the required mass from the rotor. Conversely, the same amount of torque from the rotor can generate a greater force. As the radius of a propeller increases, the amount of torque required to get a particular RPM increases with a direct relationship. Because now that torque goes further, the maximum radius for the propellers for a given mass of rotor is much larger. This is important because an increased radius also results in an increased velocity of the prop blade, which means more lift is generated and a higher altitude can be achieved. Another benefit of dump that is more subtle is the reduction in electrical requirements. Because the rotors now require less torque to operate effectively, they won't consume as much electricity. This is particularly relevant for lathe, since it is far enough from the sun that solar power is at a premium. For Kerbin and Eve, Dump makes it so that you generally only need one or two small solar panels with no additional batteries. This generally isn't the biggest mass saving, but is a nominal decrease nonetheless. I hope you find this mechanic useful for your own missions, and I would love to see what wacky designs you can come up with. Thanks for watching.